And we are, we are once again for Legends of the Drowned Isles. Woo! A uh, homebrew. I'm off center. No, I'm going to just note all the problems. Uh, <laughs> I, being off center is probably a perfect definition for me. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, our homebrew 5th ed D&D, normally live streamed game. But it appears that the stream of the universe has decided to get damned, so to speak. Uh, so if you're normally watching this on Twitch, do not worry. You did not miss it. You're now watching it on YouTube. All is fine. <laughs> it's fine. We're fine. How are you? Everything is fine. <laughs> uh, Fires are behind me. Yeah, I should have gotten <laughs> a fire background for this one, but I didn't. Uh, so uh, I want to uh, welcome you. I am not having enough tire. Oh, God, I'm not having enough sleep, so enough I'm tired. <laughs> so words. Holy moly, that just fell apart right away. <laughs> How about I get you guys to speak? My players, please introduce yourselves, starting with Silas. Uh, hi, my name is Pat. I play Silas Marsh, uh, who currently is very quiet and thinking very hard. Uh, I'm Marie. I'm playing Annie, who is also kind of staying quiet and thinking a lot. Hey, I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric, who is thinking a lot about the questions he's about to ask. <laughs> I have a feeling this is going to be And also, thankfully, session. not dead. <laughs> this is the episode. Yeah, yeah. Just, just two hours yeah. of, huh. But that's it. That's it. That's the whole thing. Thanks for joining us, folks. No. Well, thank you anyway for joining us. Uh, despite internet troubles, uh, it will present some interesting challenges, but we'll get through them all. So why are people so contemplative? Well, let me uh, go through a, a brief recap um, and see if I got any of it right. But thankfully, there are words already written, so I won't have to think as much, which is going to be good. In the previous session, Silas began a curious standoff with a serpentoid sea devil named Oxia and her unnamed but obviously superlative four-armed counterpart. During the conversation, Oxia seemed to be both amused in finding a disciple of Zagwatha in her midst and cautious about forming an alliance with him. Meanwhile, in another branch of the tunnels, Annie, Medrick, Joan, and Gaetano found themselves trapped in a room with the air cycling out and water rushing in. Beyond the fire door, Medrick could sense the weight of water in the room, and they believed that sea devils were coming in. In order to protect the innocent Joan, Gaetano volunteered to take one of the pots for an air source, and Annie gave up her breathing pearl to the girl. When the two former prisoners rushed upward, through the sphincter in the roof, up through the stingweed, to safety. Inside, Silas learned that Harriet was trapped in a cage in the back of the room. And, whoops, scroll too far. And some other poor, unfortunate soul was wrapped up in a thick webbing nearby. A dark, roiling mass covered a part of the room and was later revealed to be hiding the star stone they had been seeking. As Oxy continued to question him, Silas was able to learn a number of things, one, that the Sea Devils had been at war with the Oroka, or Sea Elves, for a long time. But then the Sea Elves had suddenly va vanished, perhaps leaving this plane of existence entirely. He learned that Harriet was, to Oxia, a morsel of Sea Elf flesh that she might feast on. But perhaps most importantly, he discovered that the Sea Devils were looking to mass a large campaign to claim their seas as, the seas as their own, and that included attacking the nearby town of Ilthvater. Intending to deceive her, Silas conjured the terrifying image of Mother Hydra, as he had done before, claiming that he needed to consult with her about whether an agreement could be made to assist, the, uh, assist Oxia and her clan in the assault. But midway through the conjuring, the image strengthened and solidified, and began to move out of his control. It would appear that in invoking Mother Hydra's name, Silas may have invoked the creature itself. Back in the cave, the room flooded, and Annie carefully used the other pot they had taken to give herself just enough air to hold on. A pair of sea devils swept in through the open door, and the fight was painful and nearly deadly, but in the end, Medric and Annie held their own. The door was closed once more, and the natural air production of the plants resumed, slowly forcing water from the room. The negotiations continued, with Silas finding himself partially an observer. Although impressed by this invoked creature, Oxia nonetheless held her ground and would yield only one of the two prizes as a gesture of goodwill, the girl or the stone, but not both. Silas chose the girl, but then asked to take the webbed person as well. 
Moxia waved it off, declaring that his flesh was not tasty enough to keep anyway. The image of Mother Hydra disappeared, and Silas asked for details of the attack to come, some signal he could use to start his own portion of it. Oxia, now confident in her, new, in her new ally, declared that the signal would be a beam of light from the stone, shot at the town as the moons rose on the night after next. The discussion done, Oxia conjured forth swarms of blue spiders to lead the others to this room and reunite the party. Silas quickly ushered the group, along with Harriet and the web prisoner, out of the room, claiming that he would explain later. Following along the path where they initially entered, they discovered a door which led outside the lair. Once outside, they realized that they could not have seen it, because the entrance lay in a trench overcast by dense stingweed. Along the way, Harriet made her own discovery. Prompted in part by what Oxia said, she forced herself to let go of the breath she held underwater, and realized that, with a little effort, she could breathe the water itself, apparently confirming that she was descended from the Oroka. They quickly made their way to the surface and found Gaetano quickly rolling, rolling, rowing their boat toward them, Jones sitting on the side. Explanations may be owed once dry land is achieved. And all of you have now crawled out of the water. The boat is very crowded. It is really a rowboat meant to hold no more than three people, but currently holding a six, uh, which makes it uh, a very uh, elbow-to-elbow uh, person uh, against person, completely unimaginable situation as the pandemic sp spreads across our real world. But all of you are cramped into this, this <laughs> tiny little space. Social undistancing. Pretty much. Pretty much. And there is Pushes no social... someone out of the boat. <laughs> uh, as uh, uh, Gaetano tries to, well, actually, he can spot the lighthouse from here and is actually aiming the rowboat in that direction, not having any other particular uh, uh, particular destination in mind. Joan is shivering a little bit, probably because she just got out of the, out of the water, cold water. And uh, to be honest, uh, yeah, actually, sorry, that's seven people that are in the boat, including Harriet. Um, yep. Although Harriet doesn't seem to be bothered by the, the cool air. Um did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Silas will just hang off the side of the boat and hang on to the edge. Okay. Um, actually, Harry will slip back into the water, which it's still a little yeah. awkward to to uh, to swim in the dress that she was wearing, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, she seems to be enjoying this new realization. Um, she swims with with strong, strong, uh, steady strokes. Uh, probably she had been a strong swimmer, but now she, as well as the rest of you, perhaps realize just how much her heritage lies with the sea. Uh, Gaetano uh, whistles a little bit, a song to kind of keep his, his rhythm with the oars, uh, a song to kind of, in some ways, uh, you feel like it's a, a peaceful song. Um one that undoubtedly he's he's whistled many times after some some traumatic event to try to bring some sense of normalcy. Stella just seems to be wide eyed, looking at everything, not shivering as the uh, as the as Joan is, but then again may not have been in the water quite as long. Uh, Silas, actually, with like, uh, would just sort of um, settle into a. Uh, a sea shanty that goes in uh, goes into rowing because uh, shanties are basically work assistance songs uh, so there's a certain beat to the rowing that uh, Silas will uh, so without really thinking much just uh, fall into uh, to uh, basically this I mean he's not helping with the rowing but it just uh, something he gets into Medric will help with the rowing just to get out of the sea faster. <laughs> Unfortunately, there really are only two oars. <laughs> it's tough to shift around on the uh, on the little dinghy, as as uh, as we noted. Right. Um, uh, of... you, you, you could help avoid the shoals, though. Okay. That's definitely true. Uh, as you remember, the, you are in the midst of the dead man's fingers, which is this 
this uh, pretty nasty shoal. The water is a little bit higher than when you went in. Um, tide is starting to rush in, so it's a little bit easier. Uh, but that also makes the ones that were just below the surface even harder to see. Uh, Gitano throws a, a smile towards Silas, noting the song, and actually uh, kind of jumps in on uh, collective parts. He seems to know the song well. And whenever there's a, a chorus, uh, he, he heartily jumps in and tries to, with uh, sort of looking around at the other others, it tries to be encouraging to jump in as well in the chorus. Um, Joan seems to find this uh, amusing and tries, but she doesn't seem to all have any musical talent whatsoever and seems to be just a half beat behind everybody else and trying to catch I, the chorus. I, I do kind of like try to hum along. Sea shanties are usually pretty easy to do without having any singing. Um, it's more timing for her, and, and she's still shiv shivering as well, so it's sort of like, yeah. you know, and a, a row, a row, row yeah. your boat. That's it. Silas is just singing, row, row, row your boat. <laughs> it's, the, it's the only one that came to mind in my tired state. Uh, Stela, uh, Stela tries, um, but clearly doesn't really understand the sequence of how the song is meant to go. I also just realized all of your icons are gone. When did that happen? What? Oh, on the map. Probably when you lost all of us. Oh, man. Again. Well, those <laughs> should be coming from files. All right. Well, anyway. Um, what is what is the universe anyway? All right. Uh, it may be because those are stored on a board. All right. Uh, um, yeah. So in this way, you make your way back... Um, Medrick, if you are keeping an eye out for those shoals, let me get a perception check from you. All right. Uh, do it with uh, do it with advantage, as uh, uh, both Silas and uh, Harriet are in the water and actually can help. Well, that's a twelve with advantage. <laughs> Okay. Um, as you're pulling along, there's a, a close moment where it's just at the last moment, moment you point out the shoal just behind uh, where the, the boat is, is going, just in front of the bow. Uh, and Gaetano swears but manages at the last minute to avoid it. Uh, and you hear this nasty scraping sound as the edge of the rock uh, scrapes onto the, the boat. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you have a feeling that uh, while it didn't hurt the boat as it is right now, uh, it probably is going to need some attention, and that's going to be a weaker side of that particular uh, boat. Uh, it it silences Joan and Stela, however, and both are are a bit, bit shaken up by it. Uh, it takes about uh, I don't know exactly how long. I think it was twenty minutes or something. By the time you you were fighting the thing on the way out, probably a little less than that with. Uh, easy strokes. As you see the lighthouse now come within view. On the deck, uh, or, or rather on the outside, uh, uh, back deck essentially of the lighthouse uh, where you'd launched from, you can see somebody just sent me a message and it beeped on me, so I'm confused. Uh, uh, you see, um, oh man, do I even have them here? Uh, where is his name? Angus Frey. The old man, who looks like he's been pacing for a while, staring out at the sea, uh, and then kind of has spotted you. Uh, and you see him kind of bob his head as uh, he counts um, the people on the uh, people on the uh, boat, and seemingly gets more agitated when he doesn't recognize the bright red hair of his daughter uh, until below the deck, just a few feet beneath him, uh, she crests through the water in a rather dramatic and probably intentionally so uh, way um, with enough strength that she comes halfway out of the water. Um, the, the water, her hips just barely uh, cresting the water, uh, and he, uh, he steps back as she sort of lands and, and attaches herself or hooks onto the small ladder uh, there. It takes I shouldn't be, but I'm just imagining a, uh, a dolphin chatter, like, eh, 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 eh. 
No, but uh, it wouldn't be surprising, perhaps, at this point, given the, the way that she swam. Um, but uh, once she's launched herself and landed on there, he kind of does a double take. Uh, each of you can make an insight check. Probably not. Ten. Also ten. Um, I had the character sheet out, but I haven't closed it. Uh, insight. Doggone you, Amazon. <laughs> Nine. Rolling low. <laughs> wow, really? Yep. Uh, nine and two tens. Uh, well, uh, then... <laughs> it's like it's not this character's thing. <laughs> uh, not enough skill. As, as you watch, you see him take a few steps back, uh, and then uh, his his head kind of tilts at an odd angle, as if he's trying to understand what he's seeing. Uh, but as uh, Harriet takes one step and then another out of the water now, her feet uh, solidly on the ladder, uh, he rushes forward and uh, grabs her by the shoulders, pulling her up onto the deck uh, into a very warm hug. A bit of an antithesis from what you've seen from Angus so far, who's been the, the, the curmudgeon, essentially, so, uh, but now clearly happy to see his daughter back. A few seconds later, they don't seem to have noticed Angus still holding on to his daughter closely, uh, you pull the, or rather, Gaetano pulls the boat up to the uh, the deck. Ahoy there, buddy. Would you send me a, a rope? I need to tie on. And Angus seems to look very puzzled at who this new person is. But I'm not your buddy, pal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but tosses a rope anyway for the 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 small boat to be attached. Uh, with the, the the height of the water. Um, you can actually step up from the boat to the deck. It's it's cl or climb up rather than trying to either get out of the boat, but it's not all the way, so there's not uh, an even walk. It's just a, it's a step up. Um, but uh, both uh, Stela and Joan make the attempt. Uh, Stela seems a little bit more quick on her feet uh, and is able to clamber up, but Joan uh, seems to struggle for a moment. Uh, and I'll can... give her a lift so she can hang on. Okay. Um, she seems a, a little shaken when you uh, grab onto her hips and kind of give her a bit of a push. Uh, and you can kind of feel how cold her, her, her skin is. You're not touching skin, but you can feel that she is absolutely chilled to the bone. Uh, and while she takes an initial start and looks back at you, um, she smiles and, and then kind of uh, leans into your, your, your shove, uh, getting her up onto the deck. As, I'll go up next. As you all, I presume, climb onto the deck and, and, and uh, Angus. I would like to, I'm guessing Gaetano is going last. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go just before him. Um, I'm going to take the ring off my thumb and say, I'm going to assume this is yours and just go up. Okay. Actually, uh, Silas, uh, again, he's deep in thought and hanging on the side of the boat. So he would, uh, he's waiting till. Everyone else goes up. He, he'll head up once he says, oh, wait, nobody's here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but he's not really paying attention to anything. Um, Andy, you're a little surprised that after you present this this ring to Gaetano, who who takes it with a, a nod and a, and a, a bit of a knowing smile. Um, there's a moment in which he, he looks directly at you and he kind of winks as he as he takes the, the, the ring from you. Thank you, milady. Uh, and uh, takes it and kind of slips it onto one of his, is actually slipping it onto his smallest finger, uh, which you can see are quite thick and strong. Um, at this point, Angus has already pulled uh, Harriet back in. You can hear the cries of uh, Henry and Esther uh, from inside as they see their mother. Um, you also have noticed as you've approached the lighthouse, even though it is during the day, there is a bit of a glow from the upper parts. Uh, that seems to to waver and shimmer and shift. Um, it it appears that whatever Jonas was working on before he left to try to get the lighthouse back into relative working order is still underway. Um, the water is cool around you, Silas, as you kind of float there, half half in thought. 
Um, there's a little bit of a, of a shaking motion as the rowboat by you shifts in the water, and then as each, each person steps out, finally um, Annie and then Gitano stepping onto the, the shore. You can hear voices uh, inside, and you can hear the voices up above, but you find yourself leaning back a little bit, relaxing in this weird moment, the tension somewhat <laughs> dripping out of you as your head dips below the water, almost unconsciously. And you feel something. It's like a thrum that, that beats through the water, distant and slow, but somehow you feel it is alive. It is familiar. It calls to you. Somewhere out there, she calls to you. You think about that for a moment and then realize you're still underwater. Push yourself up above and take a deep breath. That moment passing. But you're not sure how long time has actually passed. Uh, uh, yeah, he'll, uh, he'll hurry up the ladder after that. Um... A large fire is burning in the, the stove right now. <clears throat> And as soon as you enter from the, the outside, um, there is almost a wave of heat and humidity. Uh, and there's a smell as well. It smells like fish soup. And it seems that Angus has been making dinner, essentially. Uh, a very thick, very rustic fish stew. Oh, it's good to be back on the land. Um uh, Gaetano kind of slaps you on the shoulder. I kid, it really is. Not that uh, I'll stay here for long, because the sea always calls me, but uh, I need to know what happened. And Angus uh, kind of turns to the rest of you. Yes, I need to know as well. What, uh, what went on down there? I'm not entirely sure. There was some kind of underwater base hidden under a field of stingweeds. We went in through a secret entrance, I guess. Rescued some people, and I'll point at uh, Gaetano and Joan. Killed a bunch of sea devils, and things were looking rough. And then we'll have to ask Silas, because there was a snake-like sea devil and a four-armed sea devil, and Silas seems to be buddies with them. Yeah, what was that about? I'm assuming he tricked them into something, but... In the background, uh, Harriet is kind of just having a, a seat with Henry, kind of bolted onto her leg. Uh, doesn't look like the boy wants to leave at all. Uh, Esther has been suggested highly by Angus, through a couple mm -hmm. of, of strong words, to, uh, to start serving the soup. Angus himself kind of sits down into what looks like his chair in the corner. You've seen him sit there before, uh, kind of relaxing, but also trying to pay attention, stoking his pipe and getting ready to listen. I will, um, while all this is happening, I'll like go and grab my bag and my stuff that, that I left. Yep, uh, and I would, I'd like to make sure that nobody went in it because I do have a lock on it that's <laughs> really hard to I'll touch my stuff. <laughs> make a it, it, um, make a wisdom plus sleight of hand roll. Okay. Uh, so that would be uh, what's proficiency two. Uh, that is a 30. sixteen. Okay, and make an insight check too, please. It is a magical lock that is disadvantaged to pick. Mm -hmm. uh, insight? Yep. Um, that is a 15. Okay. As you, uh, as you go over your bag and, and kind of pull it out and inspect it for uh, any, any uh, issues, it does seem to be in the same position it was in when you left before. You're looking closely at the lock. Um, and the lock is, is visibly fancier than 
than the bag in many ways. Um, it, it, but you have a lot of confidence in this. And as you look at it, you kind of look at it closely, uh, just kind of glancing, uh, but trying not to paint, uh, be, uh, uh, be noticed. Uh, and you do notice a couple of scuff marks uh, around the, the center part of the lock. Um, it, it looks as though uh, someone may have tried to, to pick the lock, but um, the lock easily rebuffed them. Um, you yourself have, have, have practiced with this lock numerous times, and you know how difficult it is to actually uh, open up. But it, it looks almost as though someone tried, and you kind of look up and look around at the group that's there and find uh, Henry kind of looking at you wide-eyed, and he very quickly looks away, uh, looks at his mom. <laughs> but you see him glance back once or twice, and you get the feeling that, that he feels guilty. Whether he actually tried this or not, he noticed that you were looking at the lock. Fair enough. Oh, children. <laughs> Um, is Silas back in the room now? Yeah. yeah. Silas has entered. And uh, Esther at this point is starting to spoon out uh, bowls of thick broth, um, giving uh, Angus one in a big, uh, uh, as they describe it in England, a big builder's mug, which is just basically a large size mug, which is good for soup. Uh, given that they don't seem to have a huge number of extra bowls, but they have just enough mostly for pretty much the, the main people at the table. Uh, and the kids and uh, I have a musket. I'll okay. grab a bowl from that. Uh, and uh, Esther will will play. Will lay this down, and it, it fills the room with the smell as soon as it's it's uh, it's kind of poured in the bowls, uh, and you can kind of smell the salty, uh, rich, uh, fishy smell essentially of the soup um, that gives that extra layer of comfort to this place, especially given the very uncomfortable and unhospitable place you were just in. Yeah. But uh, Kitano takes a couple of sips and nods uh, appreciatively. Yeah, I, I'd like to hear what happened, kid, if you don't mind explaining. And how come you swim so fast, and how come this thing weed doesn't seem to hurt you? No. I, uh, he doesn't swim fast. <laughs> uh... But uh, yes, the rest of the stuff, yes, is fine. Um, you just swim slowly, Medrick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Medrick feels shame from somewhere in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Silas is quiet for a minute. Then, then just looks up around at everyone and says, um, everyone's in danger. The town is in danger. Uh, the sea devils are going to attack them. Uh, we have to stop it. Gitano looks up with some surprise, um, kind of spoon halfway to his mouth, which he drops into his bowl. They're going to attack the town. You know for this for sure. Yes. And they just gave you that information? Did you know those those things? No. No, but it, I made a deal with them to let the two of them go. Oh. In the corner, Angus kind of points with the uh, the uh, pipe. Mm. Why do they want my daughter? You said before, I believe, that your wife came from the sea? And he kind of clamps down on the on the pipe and, and nods. You see the, the, the smoke billow up around him. Okay. Your daughter is of her line. She is, to some degree, of the sea. Uh, Jonas's voice from the stairs kind of calls over. Okay. Perhaps this conversation is more for the adults. 
And I look over at, uh, well, I just give a quick glance to the side to um, Emery. Uh, Henry, by the way, has been following this conversation with complete attention. Uh, while, <laughs> while he hasn't sort of left his mother's side and, and while he's, he's sort of firmly attached to her at the moment, he's sort of watching this as you might watch a tennis match, kind of head bobbing to watch each face as they speak, kind of going, this is amazing. What does this mean? What did Grampy say? Oh, my God. Of the sea? What the hell does that mean? All of this is playing across silently across his face. From the stairwell, mm -hmm. uh, Jonas's voice uh, kind of calls, of the sea, who's of the... And then he spots uh, Harriet uh, in the room uh, and then runs over uh, to her. Oh, thank God you're back. And uh, leans down to, to uh, hold her close. Uh, you hear a little uh, uh, a voice from Henry as he kind of like, hey, and kind of gets shoved out of the way a little bit by the reunion. Um, uh there, there's, there's. I'm visibly fidgeting with my ring. Okay. The uh. I'll let you weren't able to get back the, the the beacon. After a second, Jonas kind of registers what you said and, and kind of turns back, still arms around his wife, uh, leans back at you, and kind of there's a crease across his face. You can see now uh, that there's also, uh, literally a, 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 a sort of black soot marks on his forehead. Uh, you can almost imagine where he was working with something with his hands and went to wipe his head to wipe the sweat away and ended up leaving the black smear across it. Uh, and he, you can see also he's wearing uh, an apron, um, looks like a heavy leather apron uh, with little burn marks here and there. Uh, his glasses are, are, are a little askew as he looks back. Oh, that's not good. There's another storm coming in, at least according to the, the barometer. I've got something working for now, but uh, it's it's going to be nasty. I think it's going to be another day before it hits in full, but uh, i got to get back to it then. Uh, maybe uh, you can come with me, and he turns back to his wife, uh, who, who kind of nods, uh, and then uh, when she stands up, uh, he kind of looks at her. Um, maybe you need to change your clothes first. As she's still quite literally... Uh, 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 ripping wet at this point uh esther has put a, a blanket around joan's uh shoulders to try to calm her uh her nerves and her cold uh, i think uh, uh, harriet speaks i think that'd be a good idea and, and maybe you can take henry and explain how the lighthouse works and kind of looking over at silas and and, and nodding a little bit acknowledging his his suggestion that maybe the kids should leave the room uh Henry kind of at this point is visibly torn, uh, struck in absolute twain, because clearly he doesn't know enough about the lighthouse yet. And you get the feeling that maybe he hasn't really been that, been there yet. You can imagine where it would be dangerous to have a young boy in such a, a, an environment. Heck, even a grown uh, half-orc will uh, <laughs> stare at the light if, he, if he's not careful. Oh, that was intentional. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, Calculated it, risk. It, it surprised Jonas to be sure, uh, but also uh, he's 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 on that threshold too. Henry is where it's sort of like, oh man, I really want to do that, but oh man, they're going to talk about something interesting without me. Um, but after a moment's urging from his mother and Jonas, basically taking him by the shoulder and starting to lead him upward, uh, he he relents. And there's a bit of a sag in his shoulder uh, until Jonas uh, whispers something to him that his face just lights up. I'm not sure what he said, but it was probably something to do with the light mechanisms up, up above uh, as uh, the boy sprints on ahead. Um, Esther uh, sees that, looks over at Silas, and there's a, a look of determination on her face, Silas, that uh, says that while you might consider to be one of the children... She's not going anywhere. Well, Silas didn't look at her. Silas just looked at Henry. But you said there were there were children. Uh, it was a plural, yeah. so uh, she she kind of she kind of took a little bit of offense to a giant teenager. Pretty mm -hmm. much, pretty much. Teen angst. He's not a child. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Harry does go into the shared room she has with with uh, Jonas, which is literally on the other side of this this room. It's not a very big place. 
uh, and goes into change. Um, um, Silas, you, men you mentioned you made a deal with them. What kind of deal? Did you uh, have that one? First, um, let's see. Okay, well, once Henry's out of the uh, far enough way that he can't easily hear. Um, and you can hear his footsteps heavily and, and kind of running up the, the curled stairs yeah. upward. Um, he looks at the old man and, and says, um, she was going to be food for them. The grim they, of almost anger. Uh, he bites down harder on the pipe. They apparently prefer the flesh of sea elves, and they have not seen many. I don't believe they came here after her, but perhaps she was uh, just something found on the way. She uh, kind of takes after her mother. I, I... I, Clarice used to talk a little bit about where she came from. I didn't know much. I miss her every day, too, but she had to go, I guess. Harriet's a spitting image. And I guess, to my own mind, I figured maybe she wasn't like her mother. But those damnable devils... Nothing but beasts, then. Mm. More than beasts, in the way that some some in the town are are bad. They. They want to, well, in this case, they appear to be more than just bad, but they want to destroy the town. They want to be rid of all of the surface dwellers. Joan kind of gasps. It's uh, not going to happen. Gitano kind of shakes his head, almost confirming, or almost not confirming, but almost like it confirms something to him. That explains some of the askings they were doing then. When Joan and I here were in that other area, they would flood the space, give you just enough air to breathe, and then uh, ask you questions. Poor Joan there. She doesn't know anything about shipping or the travel around here. I know too much, I suppose, but I'm able to keep my tongue. But uh, it explains a little bit then. What kind of questions were they asking? Uh, they wanted to know which ships were coming through, when, where they typically travel. They asked questions about the town, too. Not that I told them anything useful. For all they know, the town is full of nothing but fishermen. Ah, damn. I didn't think of it at the time. That might have been actually the reason they felt they could actually take the town. They gotta let the uh, Baron know. They. Is there anything special about the town? I I just got there. I can't think of anything. But that, it is an easy target, to their minds. They were too afraid of. Of attacking before. But now that they have the Sunstone. They feel emboldened, I think. They have it? Yes. Bastards. That's well, we can, we can pull it back. Sunstone from this lighthouse, you said? Yes. Oh, well. well. That could be bad if they know how to use it. Yes. They said that their attack is... They will be attacking uh, the sunset after the next. And the signal of their attack would be some sort of beam from the stone. 
perhaps similar to that which I don't remember his name, the guy that runs the upper part of the tower. Jonas? Um, yes, uh, actually, I'd say, he'd say what your uh, son-in-law had planned for for a defense of the cove. They perhaps have a magical way of doing something similar. We have to we have to warn the town. Yes, yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel partly responsible. What I told them was that it was nothing more than a fishing town, and that's true to a certain point. But it's also a pretty damn important port, one of the biggest on this side of the uh, of the island and the first major port you're going to hit after coming from the old Vip Sea. So disrupting things here would mess up a lot of trade. Mm -hmm. Look over at, uh, at the old man again. Uh, and he'd glance, Silas would glance around at, at the others as well. To... I've, I've now, I'm like standing and pacing. Are, are there any windows? Or no? There are small round windows, yes. Uh, I'll be looking out of, of a window, kind of pacing. Okay. You may not... We probably should not tell the town of the Sunstone. As you may not get it back if the town knows about it. Well, and it's, it's, it's not really a secret. We don't know that it can be used as a weapon. They may not let you keep it if that is, if they know that. Well, that would be a damn shame. This lighthouse has been, well, yeah, it's been it's been operating for forever. I didn't start it. It's been here for a long time. Uh, but the stone made a big difference in how well we could protect the shore. Uh, if we don't have that, I, well. I have faith in Jonas a bit, but there's only so much you can do with lamp oil and uh, fancy glass. How did you get the stone? Or do you know how the stone was brought here? No, no. The lighthouse was founded before I got here. Well, we took it over as a family, my parents. I've always the... been here and maintained it. But until Jonas came, we, we only had about half the light. He's figured out more about that stone than I ever could. He was a smart kid, really. i got to be careful. There. I switch my voices here. <laughs> that is Angus there. speaking. Leader said that it was stolen from them, that they, had been, they were taking it back. Well, Not if we can help. Well, I'm Sorry, afraid at the moment. Story we haven't. I, I remember being told was that it fell from the sky. Damn near took out a boat. But they found it. And figured out what it, how to how to use it. I guess. The flame keeper might know more. I think it was her people that did it. Well, I guess it's your people, isn't it? Points at Medric. Yep. But I feel like we should inform the town about it. I mean. If it's going to be used as a weapon, they're going to find out. In any case, it's better for them to be ready for it. Whatever it can be. Well, let's not jump the gun, kid. I mean, I think the town needs to know. they got to figure out if they can defend themselves. The Baron probably would like to know, too. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, well, sea devils have a lot of different ways to attack. I don't know what they plan to do with this stone, but it's not the only thing to worry about. What are their numbers like? Yeah, well, no one really knows, to be honest. They kind of come and go as, as uh, like storms in the night. I've heard tales of large sailing vessels just completely vanishing, and the sea devils were blamed. Then again, there's a lot of different pirates, and some people just wander away with their ship. But I've seen the wreckage after some of what they've done. At least I think it was them. Nothing but... Sticks left over floating in the water. They've got some power. And there's a lot of them, but I I don't know what they're going to bring with them. But I doubt that stone's the only thing. 
We only saw a few in their nest down there, but we don't know how many nests there are. There could be dozens of sea devils. There could be hundreds. Um, the Baron has increased the town guard, but I'm not certain how big that is, and the town doesn't have any defenses, really. I don't know if he increased it or planned to increase it. That's the thing. Because that, that uh, moment, that was just like a couple days ago, right? Like he was getting the funds to increase the guard? The the taxes were to pay for the increased guard, but there had been a noticeable increase in the people already. Uh, okay. And, and Medrick had also seen some of uh, uh, his soldier friends had joined the guard. Now, the presence hasn't been entirely felt about the town. It's not exactly sure where they're gathering or, or, or what stage they're at. Um, but the excuse, at least given by the tax collector, was that there was additional um, people to pay for. Silas, you mentioned you made a deal with the snake devil down below. What deal was that? Gitano watches but, and, and, and eyes Silas somewhat curiously. I agreed that if they gave us their prisoners, that my people would assist them. Your people? What? what, what? Are you bound to that deal in any way, or can you just turn around and be like, nope? Are you talking about the Marsh clan, says Angus from the corner. Are they involved in this? Say, uh, looking over at Medrick, as Pat desperately tries to remember the three questions in order. <laughs> uh, I am... I don't know if I'm bound. I am not bound magically, but... Whatever I do, there will be consequences. Uh, looking over at, was it the grandfather that was talking? Yep, uh, Angus. Uh, yes, my family that live outside of the town. Oh, I, know your, I know your family. I've seen them he said, He said the Marsh clan, and then he said something else. Uh, are, they, are they involved in this? Oh, yeah. They will not be involved in this if I have anything to say about it. But I don't know what the reactions of the sea devils will be. I have to go talk to them and let them know that they are in danger. And my family is... What's the word? I've heard plenty of words around your family, says Angus from the corner. My family sticks to themselves. They may not wish to help, but I will not let them cause, or not let them, say, trying to phrase it away. They would not, they do not want the town to come to harm. My family is not evil just they stick with their own they don't fit in elsewhere but is there anything in themselves sorry is there anything special about them depends on which rumors you believe says angus from the corner i've heard tales of the marsh clan I've heard a lot of tales. I'm happy to say that <coughs> Silas here doesn't seem to be like the rest of them, at least none that I've met so far. But I don't know how far the fish swim from the school. What kind of tales? Silas just looks down as uh, as they talk. 
Well, I don't like to repeat stories meant to scare kids. But there's awful lot of strange rumors. Reasons why they keep themselves. I don't believe half of them. It's the other half that bother me still. My family has their own ways. I think we've passed the, the point of being cryptic about it. There are things why I don't want to talk about in front of strangers. Look, kid, I've only known you a few minutes, it seems like, maybe an hour at this point. And I get it. And he kind of half looks over at Annie. Sometimes, sometimes things got to remain a secret to protect others for the moment. I get that. And it doesn't really matter in some ways anyway. What you did, kid, was quick thinking. If you didn't yeah. do it with the intention of actually joining with them, then from what I can tell, that's not you. After all, you went after this fellow's daughter and that stone. It saved me and Joan and Stella here. If you didn't have a, a, a bad thought in it, I think we got to focus on what's to come next. Silas will speak uh, into the minds of Annie and Medrick. He says, I will talk about this, but not with the others here. I'll just slowly nod. I don't, I, I, I respond. Uh, I don't think Gaetano is going to leave. Um, and Silas will say, um, we have only a day and a half. We must be on our way to prepare to defend the town. If you, tomorrow, if you, well, if it will last that long, if you put out the light, I believe they will leave you alone. They have what they came here for. Bar the doors. Block yourselves in. They may send some for you, but I think you can keep them out. No, gods damn it, we won't. We got a duty to keep that light on. If there's a storm coming, like Jonas says, well, by God, we're going to get whatever light we can and make it brighter than ever. Damn the sea devils. We'll be ready for them this time. They won't sneak up on us in the dark like they did this time. I'll send the kids into town. But Jonas we can take... Can... If you would. Sorry, I missed the end of what he said. Um, we'll send the kids into town, and, and when Annie says we can take them, uh, he kind of nods. I don't have family there anymore. They're all long dead. But uh, I think Jonas's family is all back in Pittajun, so I ain't got anybody to send them with. I'm old enough to do this. Esther kind of speaks up. And Angus kind of gives her a strange look. And you can notice, too, that the family resemblance still carries through uh, Esther. Although her hair is not quite as vividly red as her mother's, uh, it still has that deeper shade. Uh, she's shaking a little bit kind of having absorbed all of this, perhaps regretting being in the room as she so much insisted to be, uh, but stands a little bit stronger and taller. Sir, I think the town is in more danger than the lighthouse is. I think this is a safer place for them. Angus, for all of you. Angus kind of chews on his, uh, his uh, pipe for a second or two and can nods. Ah, uh, maybe you're right. All right. Maybe take them to the woods, away from the lighthouse. If you have a place that that the sea devils would have a hard time finding, they're not used to the surface. If there's a, I don't know, some place, yes, in the middle of the woods where you could 
be lost from them. There's there's a secret cave, and she kind of looks around, realizing that she said that out loud. Henry and I used to play there all the time. I think he still goes there from time to time, at least when work's to be done. But <laughs> I think we could hold up there. It's not too far away, and it's a bit hidden. The entrance is kind of overgrown. I think that might be a better option. Yes. But we should be going. The town will need as much time as it can get. And besides, uh, while the town is not going to be a safest place to come, I think it might be where Joan and Stela here would find a little more comfort. Joan kind of nods slowly. Stela looks around, her eyes kind of wide, trying to take everything in. Hasn't really said <laughs> anything at all. Um, isn't I sure. am normal human, like you humans. Yeah. And, uh, has has enjoyed this soup. In fact, seems to have asked for seconds. Um, mostly drinking it directly from the bowl, which is not uncommon. Uh, it's it's a, a wide brim bowl for that reason. Um, and then um, kind of kind of nods when the attention sort of comes towards her. Yes, town, good. Please. Right, right then. You can come. Definitely. It's settled then. Um, we'll, I guess, go to the town. I, I don't, I haven't been here before. Uh, so I don't know the area. I know of the Baron, but I've never met him. Maybe some of you have better connections here and kind of looking at Annie as, as kind of fishing. I look at my hand and then look at him for confirmation of like what he's thinking. Maybe um, an insight check. 14. 14. It's clear. I'm that it, sorry. I'm picking up what he's putting down. Uh, you think so? It's pretty clear that he, for whatever reason, thinks that you probably know someone in town to talk to, or maybe have even dealt with the Baron and Baroness herself. Maybe. Uh, and I started getting my stuff together. Um, you see... Um, Gaetano kind of nod his head and he, he starts scratching a little bit and you kind of realize that while he probably was saved from the stingweed by the lamp oil, the lamp oil itself seems to have irritated his skin a little bit. Uh, and uh, he's... Uh, Lamp products on skin is not fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you can see him kind of, kind of scratching a little bit uh, on his arm and he kind of lifts the sleeve up and you can see that there's a, a, a big broad tattoo that's just uh, you can just see the the edge of it when he lifts his uh, his shirt sleeve up. It's something blue and, and roundish, um, but you don't see much of the detail. All right then. Well, crew, looks like we've got a plan then. I should get in touch with my ship too. They're probably wondering what I did after I got thrown off into the water. You think the ship is still intact? Gods, I hope so. They got a great crew. The ship's one of the fastest I've ever ever uh, sailed on. Those kids will be fine. I keep uh, hoping. Besides, if anything can sink Captain Stoutheart, I'm sure she'll just walk to the surface. <laughs> Not too many dwarves are willing to captain the ship, but that one, that one has my money. Quite literally, actually. I'll just finish up my bowl of soup and start packing up. Okay. Um, I'll thank Angus for the food and the hospitality. He seems to be coming kind of deep in the thought. The the billows of smoke from his his 
uh, his pipe uh, kind of expressing more than he is with words right now. Uh, but he just sort of nods. He seems to be deep in thought. As uh, you collect, as uh, Esther collects the bowls and gets ready to kind of uh, give them a scrub down, um, Harriet steps down the stairs. Or, or sorry, steps out from the room where she was. Um, and you, she's changed into a, a simpler uh, shirt and trousers at this point. Uh, probably technically Jonas's, but she wears them well and seems to be comfortable um, as if the fact that they both have clothing kind of is irrelevant. They wear what they need to. Um, her hair is tied back now, um, still still somewhat wet, um, but doesn't seem to be damp, if that makes any sense. It still seems to have a, a, a look of, of sheen of being wet, but is not actually damp or dripping, not, not, not uh, uh, limp or, or flaccid, weirdly kind of almost animated, uh, but tied back into a tight, uh, tight uh, tail at the back um, as she comes out. It sounds like you have some idea what's coming. I wish that I had more to contribute. But I think you should go with the kids in the woods. It's probably best. I can keep them safe. Even if, and she looks over at Esther, even if they're growing up far more fast than I would like. Um, but I want to thank you. They... I heard them talking. I didn't understand any of the words. But the way that one looked at me, there was so much hatred there, so much anger, and I didn't understand where it was coming from. I would not have survived if it weren't for you, so thank you. I thank you too, says Stela. It's Glad to help. <laughs> I thank you too, one human to another. <laughs> Something so Let us celebrate as humans do. And and I thought she was an elf. Stela kind of uh, yeah, elf, elf. Uh, slightly bluish skin, uh, or yeah, blue green skin. Uh, and and Stela kind of sensing the awkwardness, kind of shrinks down on herself a little bit. Um, sorry, speaking bad. No. Um, um, I look at, uh, oh, crap, what was Jonas's wife's name? I forgot it. Jonas Harriet. is the only name Harriet. I can <laughs> Harriet. I knew it was an H. Um, uh, I look at Harriet and ask, um, if they're going to stay in town, perhaps you could put together a small bundle of, of, clothes that they could wear maybe some food um i think they were going to go hide in, in a cave well yeah. uh, joan and uh, stela i think you're referring to oh uh well and uh Gaetano, Gaetano, whatever his name is mm -hmm. uh they i think those three were coming to the town yeah, yeah. Those yeah. um so silas basically look, uh, looks over at the other Gitano and says, uh, perhaps uh, you could help get them uh, some uh, some clothes and some food while uh, Silas looks over at Annie and Medrick and says, uh, well, we prepare the uh, the cart. I can at least get them a change of clothes, something a little drier, and maybe a blanket. Ladies, if you'll step this way, and she kind of steps aside from the very small room that she, she and uh, Jonas live in to begin with uh, and kind of gestures the two of them in um, and Joan uh, kind of looking at you guys as she passes uh, kind of silently uh, uh, nodding her head in thanks uh, and Stela uh, looking at Joan kind of doing the same but again still with that, that sort of wide-eyed trying to take everything in kind of look 
Uh, and uh, Harriet takes them to presumably get some clothes from her from her own stash. And they're out of the room. Um, and uh, uh, Esther speaks. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll get some food together so that we have something to eat up by the rock. Uh, Silas back on it, actually. <laughs> looks around it at uh, either uh, the grandfather or Jonas, and back to Gitano. Gitano. Jonas, Jonas and Henry are still in the tower. Yeah, uh, it's like uh, uh, perhaps someone could assist Gitano. I think it's Gitano. Gitano. Yeah. Okay, Gitano, um, and then he'll just look back at Annie and Medrick and and then head out uh, head out the door towards the horse and the cart. At this point, because it's nearing a high tide, um, the water is lapping up against the edge of the the uh, porch at the back. Um, but it, you know the way and you know where to, to jump and to walk if you want to wade through the water. Uh, but it will be wet. Um... I might as well wade through. You're still pretty much soaking wet anyway. You've had a bit of chance to, you know, probably half an hour, an hour to dry off inside, but there's still a fair amount of dampness. Um, I'm carrying like, the crate and my bag above my head so it do not go wet. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Silas is absentmindedly uh, just scratching uh, Gideon behind his little ear bumps. Yeah, Gideon, Gideon flies up and kind of flies over you and kind of flies in circles around your head. And as it as uh, it passes in front of your face, there's a sort of quirky look as if it's kind of scanning your face, trying to figure out if something has changed. It seems to sense your agitation a little bit or your, your concern a little bit uh, and, and, and trying to read you essentially as it passes by. Uh, Medric, your armor is here. Uh, you can put it yeah. on before you get in the water or just carry it over. That's up to you. I'll carry it over. Okay. The water isn't super deep on this particular side, even at high tide. Um, it still only gets up to about your shoulders. So it is manageable to, to wander on through. You can hear Gaetano uh, talking to uh, uh, Angus. And, and you also hear a Jonas's voice uh, in a second or two. Kind of, uh, they seem to be deep in conversation, probably about the lighthouse. You're not exactly sure, as the words fade and you pass onto the shore, uh, where uh, you go over to the woods, where your uh, mule, I think it was, or donkey, the horse. Or is it a horse? No, I had a horse. Yeah, I have a riding horse. Okay, uh, and your cart are still located. Are we all three of us by ourselves only, or? Uh, that was Silas's intent. Okay. It seems like okay, the so Annie has uh, apparently stayed in the water for a second longer. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's uh, she's keeping her fish and chips uh, dry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just had to go check something. Don't worry. <laughs> hey, Silas. When I ask about your family, if there was anything special about them, that was not I would that was not meant to be an insult. I'd just like to avoid any further surprises. No, it's been implied many times that there's something going on with your family. Well, people treat outsiders as outsiders, but my family. My family has, for generations, worshipped a demigod, I guess, that, that has protected them. But... It's something that we always, that we keep to ourselves because well, we are outsiders. 
Which demigod is it? We just call her the mother. She ensures uh, good fishing, uh, safe home, but there, as you say, so she ensures good fishing and a safe home in exchange for our worship and service. We mark the rituals and watch for omens. Do I know anything about what he's just described? You can make a religion check. Mm hmm. Okay. That is a 16. Hey, nice. There are, of course, the, the main gods that everybody's familiar with. You most intimately familiar with Ignis. Um, there is Marina of the Sea and also of one of the moons. Marius of a second moon and a god among the dwarves and a god among the, the elves and, and gnomes. So there are numerous gods that exist. A small pantheon, but, but knowable. As you start to think about it, you feel like something's missing, but you can't put your finger on it. But there are a number of small cults that exist, usually to powerful beings, usually to beings who do not have purchase on this world, who are seeking that purchase. Now, some of them are completely benign. In your experience, uh, there have been different sailors who are superstitious. There have been soldiers themselves who, who have pledged allegiance to the memory of a long-lost soldier whose deeds were so great that they held down through the generations. So it's not unusual to find something like this or hear about it. Now, the official Ignean stance is that there are only five gods. Yeah. Ignean, Ignis is the the head of the pantheon. Um, Marina and... Uh, I almost said Medric. Uh, Marina and Marius. Uh, Tandu and... Uh, uh, Ilothili, I think is one of the names she has. Um, and that all others are to be mistrusted or treated with care at the very best now you've known Silas for a while and you've seen who he is you can make your own judgment as to where that that uh, that judgment needs to be applied okay um, mother doesn't have a name uh she is known as Mother Hydra. She is a a goddess of the sea. Do I clue in that that's the illusion that he summoned back in the uh, Sea Devil's Cave? But technically, the one that he actually the one that he summoned wasn't. The first one, the one that you guys saw, wasn't meant yeah. to be her. Okay. Uh, it was just meant to be like a a monstery thing, scary thing. Um, I mean, you could you could ask if that's what he was. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to clear clarify that. Uh, um, uh, he said, "No, no, that was that was just my attempt to to scare them." Uh, yeah. Oh, also, uh, out of character, I have to mention when he was pretending to be a sea devil. The sea devil did not have a tail, because I cannot mimic things with limbs that I don't have. Okay. Uh, so he was just doing as close as he could get. Um, uh, no. No, that's not what she looks like. At least in my experience. I mean... I'll just nod. Few... 
few in my family have ever really contacted her my knowledge uh most is it some of my family are closer to to her than to uh, he'd look over at Annie um, to you uh, and he looks a little I think guarded uh, but he uh, he opens up his shirt and sort of see what's he wearing? yeah no he's got the jacket on right now so he takes off the jacket and sort of pulls his shirt up and you can actually see a few patches of almost like fish scales uh, on the skin of his back. Um, I missed the sentence before, uh, like you. Um, not all of uh, my family, uh, no. Uh, some of my family are closer to her than they are to you, uh, oh. he said, looking at Annie. Uh, specifically not looking at Medrick. Uh, but, um, and then he'll pull his shirt back down. Uh, so in the midday sun, it's a little after uh, lunchtime at this point. The the patch of scale seems to glisten this iridescent green and blue. Um, they don't seem to be what you might at first take to be a tattoo or something painted on. But as he shifts ever so slightly, you can see the, the rounded edge of actual scale. Um, it seems to be growing naturally out of his skin. Damn. Interesting. That looks like a condition. Um, a condition of my birth, yes. Um, this is one of the reasons why we 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 stay to ourselves. We do not get judged so harshly. And you could probably make an insight check because there's something more that he's not saying, but you may or may not pick up on that. Inside. Are you trying to be deceptive or are you trying to be elusive? Um, kind of elusive. Just there's stuff. There's stuff that there are things that he's not saying that that kind of uh, link to that so he's basically not telling everything and it so kind of bothers you mm -hmm. so they might pick up on that we'll, we'll call that a deception uh, contested versus insight then uh oh. having for insight for me yeah, I'm going to make it a disadvantage because this is bothering him. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Annie, the side of the scales was unexpected, and it your your mind kind of lingers on that for a few minutes, and you don't really notice the nervousness that Silas seems to have. But Medrick, you pick up on it clearly. Um, he's uncomfortable. He's trying to speak and tell you things, but he's also definitely not telling you certain things. He's hiding something. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to judge you, man. I know you won't, but as I said earlier, or as I said down there, I think there are things that if, well, 
you know how sometimes you want to know something and when you find out you realize you really didn't want to know no well not that i didn't want to know like one time there was i remember i was a little kid and my mother had this one cupboard always locked and i had to know like what was in there and eventually i broke into it and i find and i, I found out and it was just some trinket that had sentimental value like it was it was a disappointment but i didn't not want to know so in, in in that sense, like, if I wanted to know something and then I realized I didn't really want to know, like, it's more of a disappointment sense, but I, I don't think this is going to be as disappointing. Um. I understand you, you just don't want people to treat you differently if they find out. And don't worry, we won't tell the rest of the people tagging along with us. Silas looks conflicted for a minute. I, it's not just that. I think that there is more that I think my family has done things that aren't right. I don't... Then we'll keep your secrets well, safe from the city guard as well. The mother, the mother protects us and ensures that we survive and prosper. But I think they killed my wife. Sometimes I have been told that I am the future of the clan. Something they call the harbinger. Someone who will serve mother hydra and help bring her to greatness and i i did not have i thought that i could do that but after molly after nikki was born molly saw the patches on him as well and i i had lied to her about what they meant that they were a curse but she saw how the others treated or treat nikki almost worshipful And my parents insist it was an accident, but I don't know if I believe them. Huh. I don't know, but when, when I was talking with Oxia, the priestess down there, she called uh, she knew what i was and who i served wait before you even met her you just walked in and she knew? i i think perhaps the illusions i was casting may have given it away um i i'm not actually a wizard 
Um, but the magic. And my abilities are given to me by the mother. Uh, Stealth warlock. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, well, your performances are still entertaining, though. I, I'm glad of that. I want to help the town, but I don't. I don't know if. I don't know if I'm on the right side. I, I attempted to fool Oxia with an illusion of uh, what I've what I've heard described of Mother Hydra and uh, he will make it clear that he's about to make an illusion so nobody is suddenly surprised <laughs> and he'll make about a foot tall illusion of Mother Hydra um, which uh, Again, if uh, anyone was at the Patreon, uh, not Patreon, Pinterest. Oh, right. Crap. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, actually, I can probably put a link in the chat. So for those of you uh, trying to follow along at home, we don't have a, 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 a copyright free image to show you here, but to describe it, no. um, it is a, a vaguely feminine form. Uh, although more of a triangular base, if you will, not even you can't see your feet, as I recall. I'm doing this from memory, so I may be wrong. But yeah, it, there's like a large skirt or dress. Uh, as soon as I can remember where the chat window is, uh, but she has uh, large uh, arms, kind of a greenish tint to her, a very severe face, and instead of hair, it is more of a writhing uh, mass of snakes, um, not entirely unlike the Medusa, but unlike the Medusa. She also has two very large snakes that protrude like tentacles out from her, the back of her shoulders. Uh, actually, uh, she has actual arms with like claws on the tips of her fingers. The big uh, snakes come from like from actually just behind her temple and sort of come down and, uh, and out. I knew I should have looked the image up. Uh, yes, there's the... the they from behind her somewhere. <laughs> See if I happen to have that right here. I think I do. Uh, Dang it! Wrong chat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, gonna lock up my computer if I open it. <laughs> I think someone's been censored. Oh, here it is. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yes, she has like. Her face is missing a nose. That's just got that, like flat front. I feel uh, like the Voldemort face. Uh, there we go. Oh, uh, yeah, and yeah. I think her eyes are solid black, but uh, and kind of greenish grayish skin. Um, and when we say a large skirt, it looks more like uh, a, a field of of seaweed, uh, dark yeah. green on top and darker brown that spreads out yeah, below. Um, more pale skin than green, too. I was thinking the rest of the body. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so even at one in one foot, uh, it's still a rather impressive figure, and uh, animated and kind of looking between you all. Um, Silas, you're not controlling it, but you get this weird sense of of the sort of subconscious control you're exerting over it still has it kind of looking between them all and imposingly standing yeah. there. And I will, I will, it'll go away after a few seconds after they've had a look. When I Gideon hisses at it. Charming. When I, when I was talking with Oxia, I created an illusion of mother Hydra to Actually, just call he just say the mother just in case saying her name catches her attention. Um, she who must not be named. Yeah, well, it's worth <laughs> a try. Voldemort. Uh, <laughs> uh, I cast an illusion of her in an attempt to fool 
the priestess that perhaps we would we could make a deal so that I could get uh, get the the two women there and the stone away from her and swindle her out of them long enough to get away. But the illusion became an extension of Mother Hydra. Crap, so you can't control it anymore? It was no longer my illusion. And she... She looked down at them, but she was willing to negotiate. When they said that they wished to destroy all the surface dwellers, Mother Hydra did not say no. Even though you are a surface dweller too? Our... Our family has left places before. I believe we would simply leave again. I don't think... I don't think my family is in danger, but perhaps if I conv can convince them that they are, they might help us and turn on the sea devils. But the fact that Mother Hydra was willing to let the town die Well, that's not very good. <laughs> I don't think that... I think she is benevolent to my family. But I think perhaps the reason we were chased out of our previous place may have been... May have been right. I don't think that... My family is not made up of horrible people, but there are members of my family that I do not like much. Every group has its bad apples. Right now, they're the ones in charge. Uh, I think perhaps that the dark side of my family is much darker than I thought. And I'm not sure what to do about it. But the town has to be protected. If you go against Mother Hydra's wishes, or the Mother's wishes... Are you going to lose your magic? I don't know. But... I'm hoping I can convince Mother Hydra that the Sea Devils are a greater enemy than the town is. That protecting the town can help us in the long run. I suppose she, you say she did look down on them. She did not care for them. Um, but that is my secret. As you have seen, I am... He looks over... Oh. Is there somebody naked behind you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, what is doing? Um, <laughs> he looks at, at Annie and uh, uh, says, as, as you saw, Medrick, I am not like Annie. You have your head on your shoulders. 
You're not like And he, he looks over at uh, at a, a tree like five or six feet away and uh, spits venom on it. Yeah, this large globule of sort of greenish goo hits the tree and starts to hiss slightly. Uh, that's weird. What was that? It's an aspect of my ancestry. The mother has other servants, deep folk who live far below the light in the water, only in darkness. Some of my ancestry comes from them. I have... Oh, you can see underwater so far. Yes. And why the poison did not affect me. Uh... That has tactical advantages. Hmm. Interesting. It has its uses, yes. Um, some of my family bears similar traits, but not all. They do prefer to marry into human families, however. But those are those are my mysteries i other than molly the two of you are the only people outside the family who found out well we're going to keep it that way this may bring you danger in the future my family does not like its secrets being known most yep. are simply I won't even talk to them. Yeah. Most are simply fisher people. But as I said, there are some that I think are more. At this point you can see over at the tower the water has risen to even levels. Um Angus himself has brought around that little boat that was in the back, the ones you used before, to the front. And in in fresh, not exactly fitting clothes, are a little large on both uh, Joan and Stela. Uh, they come stepping out along with Gaetano and uh, 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 actually and Esther. I'll kind of pile in the boat again a little bit more than it full than it should be um, to row the boat over towards the shore. They need a bigger boat. They do. Uh, Gitano and Joan and Stela get out and uh, Esther takes the boat back to the lighthouse. Um, presumably they're going to be loading that up later when they take uh, she takes Enri and mm. Harriet out to that cave. But Gaetano is, is uh, talking lightly. Joan, uh, now kind of having a ch had a chance to change out of her very sopping wet clothing, which she seems to have in a bundle uh, wrapped up in some sort of blanket uh, with her, uh, or at least there's something wrapped in the blanket, if not her clothes. Uh, and Stela similarly having a, a, a large blanket, uh, still wide-eyed as before, but, but seemingly a little more comfortable. Um, Gaetano kind of telling them stories about, you can kind of hear his voice carrying over. Um, there was this one ship that I was on. It was beautiful. It stood as tall as any house I've ever been on. And, uh, well, it sank. It was a, a very beautiful ship all up to that point. But, you know, there's only so much fire a ship can take. Ah, uh, but that was a, a terrible battle. Those damn pirates are still out there somewhere. And they're kind of walking towards you. Um, Silas uh, actually now remembers that he has prestidigitation and <laughs> clothing for the three of us. Okay. A little magical uh, poof, poof, as the water kind of flies off and, and vaporizes. That's nice. Uh, well, he'll, and he'll actually warm it as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, my my mind was elsewhere. Um, That's a neat trick, kid. As uh, as Gitano kind of walks up closer, it's it's useful. I'll say. 
Everybody, everything ready with the wagon? I don't think that yeah. Joan and Taylor here are up for walking the distance, but I could use this, use the stretch myself. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Silas has hitched up uh, Blondie, and uh, there should be just enough room. It's not maybe not a huge cart, but uh, um. And he probably would suggest that, uh, that we should all, excuse me, we should all get on. We'll need to make best possible speed uh, back to the town. We're already going to be short on time. Yep. And uh, then we're going to have a long ass rest. <laughs> other than that, Silas will be pretty quiet on the trip back. Um, Annie will sit in the cart, uh, and she's going to, while, um, while we're on the cart, she's going to scribble something down in, in her notebook just because she wants to write something, but just wants to remember to write a thing. Okay. Um, Gitano kind of looks around and then offers, uh, Joan a hand to get up on the cart and then Stella. Stela kind of looks at his hand and then kind of looks at Joan and nods her head slowly and takes the hand to get uh, get a, a lift up. Uh, walking awkwardly, the, these these are very plain uh, dresses uh, made up of uh, kind of a heavy cloth uh, that you suspect is probably uh, oiled a little bit. It's meant to be waterproof so that if you are outside, you're not going to get soaked. Um, but if you were in the water, it would probably be worse. Um, but the the idea of the fact they were already kind of cold meant that these were more winter type dresses uh, but they they climb up on board the wagon uh gaetano uh, uh hops up as well uh, he's got his cutlass on his belt very little else uh, hasn't really changed clothing uh, but he's dried out a little bit being in the fire it's a nice horse you got there <laughs> living in the fire was so much better Says, <laughs> yeah. um, and and Medric, you kind of also think as as St Silas is casting this spell and and the the water's flushing off, it's like you you probably could have cast a small magic spell, yeah, and the oh, fire would have taken care of some of that. The the uh, if you will the nimbus Produce of Ignis. Flame, yep. Sorry, produce flame. Yep. Well, even just the reaction to your normal spells produces yeah. a nimbus of flame around you. So, um, I'll produce a flame on the ground, and the flame around me is going to produce too. It's like, yeah, double the flame. Yeah, could be. <laughs> uh, but you all pile into the wagon. Uh, Gideon kind of flies <laughs> over, and uh, Gideon flies over, and, and kind of uh, Gaetano uh, notices the little creature, uh, holds out his hand, actually holds out his arm with his finger extended. And something you've never seen before, uh, 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 Silas, uh, Gideon first circles a couple of times. Uh, Gaetano makes a sound kind of like a chirping bird, but not exactly. And it almost stops Gideon midway through flight. Not, not physically, but more of out of surprise. And Gideon flies over and actually lands heavily on his finger. <laughs> That's a cute little kitten there, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Silas actually says something uh, chirpy, hissy, snaky sounding, uh, uh, telling um, Gideon uh, that uh, that human seems good, but don't get too close. I don't know him. And Gideon's head kind of swivels back and forth, and uh, and kind of. Uh, it's a, oh. Uh, it's a flying snake. It would have to wrap around his finger, I should say. Yeah. Um, actually, Annie and Medrick then hear in their heads, oh, uh, I can talk to snakes, too. Parcel tongue. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Gideon kind of 
slides around uh, Gitano's arm and sort of up towards I'll his shoulder. I, I can talk to orcs. <laughs> <laughs> Very useful ability, that. <laughs> It, it Gitano shifts a little bit as, as uh, Gideon kind of slides around his neck and you, it kind of snake-like kind of uh, wrapping around, uh, or not wrapping around rather, but sort of sliding around. Uh, and then uh, when he involuntarily shivers a little bit, Gideon lifts off and flies back over to uh, land on Silas's head and then sort of slide down into your pocket. Um, and yeah, after that... Uh... Yeah, Silas will start uh, heading out, and uh, he'll be pretty quiet. He probably won't speak until unless someone asks him something. Yeah, you pull the card yeah, around. I guess he's still at like kind of low HP. <laughs> yeah, Silas is a little beaten up at the moment. Um, I mean, having eaten soup would that have given us that's like, a short, short rest effect, effectively? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, if we you do want to spend yeah. hit dice. You can do so now. As you pull the card around, and uh, and some of you glance back, you see um, Esther and Henry uh, on this on the, uh, the standing on the platform outside. Um, Harriet joins them, and all three of them kind of wave. Henry, kind of the saddest of the three, he's he's like, this is the most. You kind of get the impression this is the most excitement he's had as a little kid on the edge of everything, and kind of the sad little wave. Um, oh. But Esther stands a little taller and, and puts her hand on his shoulder. And b behind her, kind of mimicking the same thing, Harriet stands behind her and uh, puts her hand around her, arm, or her, her shoulders. You set out on the on the, uh, trek, the trek back to town. Uh, actually, Silas would wave, uh, wave goodbye to uh, Henry and the family. Annie uh, would as well. Yeah, me too. Henry smiles and waves even harder. Um, Esther kind of sm smiles, but she's trying not to be the little kid like Henry. Uh, and so you can see her fighting with the, the notion of kind of responding as equally uh, happy. Um, but Harriet just simply grabs her old, older daughter by the shoulders and gives her a, a tight hug. You hit onto the road. It's getting to be about mid-afternoon now. And will be probably late afternoon by the time you make it back into town. The wagon is a little bit overloaded at the moment with this, this many people in it, but there's no extra cargo other than the small box that Annie rescued from the other the other wagon. Um, and the box of uh, uh, stuff we were taking back uh, that was stolen off the ship. There was that box with uh, gold and goblets and stuff. Oh yeah, in yeah, it. yeah. You filled your pockets with a bunch of stuff. You didn't actually take the whole box. You just filled your pockets. Yeah, but but I that, still was to, that was to return to the, the ship. <laughs> yep, we, we brought what we could carry. Okay. Um, yeah, so your your clothes have been sagging this entire time <laughs> with, the, with the added weight of, of, of gold and silver. And Molotov cocktails. <laughs> Do you still have those? Did you keep the, the amphora with yeah. the uh, oil? <laughs> okay. You didn't say you got rid of them. Mm. It's been a little awkward to kind of hold on to those, especially through the water. But I'll, I'll uh... well, they're they're clay, right? So it's more ka clonk, ka clonk, ka clonk. But uh, on the horizon, out towards the sea, uh, you can see that at the moment, unlike what you experienced last night, the sea seems calm. Um, it's it's placid. It's almost it's almost tranquil. Far off on the horizon, though, you can see. Um, the sun being obscured somewhat by uh, thick clouds, giving it a, a hazy uh, appearance. Still kind of gray, not really bright. All the colors seem somewhat muted around you. A little bit of the uh, storm that is to come, perhaps, further out at sea. As you ride along, Gitano kind of Seems to continue the story that he was talking to uh, to the other two about. And it's kind of a rollicking tale. 
Uh, it's it's filled with uh, harsh seas and, and strange characters. Uh, uh, a sea captain who uh, seemed to have seen way too much of the sea, uh, and and yet couldn't stop going out to the sea continually. Went down with that large fancy ship, uh, and wouldn't have had it any other way. You ride on for a while, and up ahead of you, Silas, you can see the the wreckage of that other wagon you had seen before, still sitting there by the side of the road. Has anything changed about it? Or, or can only Silas see it right now? I, I think we'll have to leave tracking down the, the bandits, the bandit trail that we found here until later. Yeah. I think this is more important. <laughs> For all we know, maybe the bandits can actually help us defend the city. At the very least, they'll defend themselves. Yeah. Maybe take a few sea devils down with them. Yeah, Might you. solve the bandit problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we can just get the bandits and the sea devils to go fight. Perfect. Perfect solution. Yep. yep. The more you know. <laughs> the plot of the fistful of, of a fistful of dollars. Fistful yeah. of sea devils. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you continue to ride along. Uh, Gaetano does sort of stop his story when he sees the wagon. What happened there? Bandit. You probably here? see the small cairn off, uh, just off into the woods. Is that a big problem around here? It's starting to be. Hmm. The Baron seems to have hired more. Uh, he raised taxes so that he could hire more military to guard the the city. Seems prudent. I mean, he quadrupled taxes, which seems, seems a bit seems intense. Are the bandits that bad then? We've only come across one major group. And all, all the bandits that we've come across have been linked to someone calling themselves the Diamond. The Diamond, eh? Interesting. Strange name. Any yeah. idea who that is? Nope. Not really. Hmm. Silas Piers at Gaetano. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> um, Joan kind of shivers a little bit uh, at all the mention of bandits and the sight of the wagon itself seems to shake her a little bit. So she kind of quickly turns away and gazes out towards the sea instead. Oh, there's a oh. ship. And she points out towards a ship that indeed seems to have uh, been coming in. Um, now look at the ship. It's still way, way out there. It's almost unnoticeable, but just on the horizon, you can see this little ship uh, bobbing. Uh, Gaetano kind of holds his hand up as if somehow this magnifies your vision. But as a, a habit you has suspect is, is long born from being at sea with the sun beating down in your face. But... Um, can't make out the flag from here. No wonder. I wonder if it's them. No, can I make an insight check? You certainly can. What are you looking for? If, if what he's, I don't know. I rolled a, <laughs> a three. So a what? Sorry. I rolled a three. Okay. So like, it's like, yeah. Okay, so what what do what do you feel like uh, Annie was looking for? Uh, if it's someone coming for her, basically. Okay. Um, you get the sense that at this distance he can't tell which ship it is. Yeah. Um, but he did mention earlier that he was on a ship before being swept overboard by the by the waves oh, yeah. and being captured. So that's probably all he means. Yeah. 
you continue to to ride on the the waves now shifting the the water now reducing back from the from the shoreline the interior port where the smaller of the ships can actually uh, uh, float all the way in now being exposed um, but the deeper port um, still plenty uh, plenty um, uh, fathoms below to allow some of the larger ships to to dock only one ship seems to be docked at the moment uh, it's a mid-sized ship that you can see even from the road at this point uh, this time uh, Gaetano uh, once again kind of taking a look saying ha ha they did make it damn it <laughs> I knew that Stoutheart wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be swept over Not like that's me. good to hear it's a fine ship the Errant Widow. I don't know the name of that. I don't know the reason for the name of that ship, but I probably should find out from Stoutheart sometime. Maybe <laughs> maybe she was running away from a marriage that she forgot about. He seems in general good spirits to have seen that ship, and clearly this is a ship he's familiar with um, and, and happy to see. Cool. Uh, but then his, his uh, look kind of falls a little bit. Damn. I might what? have to tell them to sail quick if, the, if there's going to be an attack. I'd hate to have them ha caught in docks while whatever the hell's coming out of the sea is happening. They might be able to fight, yeah. but it puts their ship at risk. Their ship at risk. Whoa, Echo. Whoa. Yeah, I just heard that. <laughs> Apparently the uh, seawall is causing an echo for me. Ooh. That might be prudent. You're still, uh, you know, still quite a distance away, so you'll stay on the, the wagon for now, uh, the road meandering in towards the center of town. Town sits before you, as it always does, a uh, sort of squat, somewhat gray uh, collection of buildings, dozens of buildings, perhaps even a hundred buildings at this point. Down by the water, of course, is where the, the port side is, where there are large warehouses set just far enough back and on, on pillars just high enough that the high tide won't flood them the place where ships will come in and leave their stock, turn around and, and uh, carry a full ship out again very quickly. The port turnover here has been quite uh, quite steady. The Silas would be familiar with, but even Annie and Medrick have been here long enough to have seen the ships come in full, disgorge their, their cargo and people, fill up again and go, leaving sometimes within the next day. Um, or sometimes they stick around. There's a, a pub down by the waterside, which... Uh, has a lot of people, uh, a lot of sailors that typically go down there. Has a very bad reputation. Um, but uh, the town itself, beyond the seawall, which is about uh, a six foot high stone uh, masonry wall, which was erected not too long ago. Um, you've actually remember perhaps hearing some of the town folk mentioning how how much better it was now the seawall was actually erected. The previous one having been only about half the height, um, and the only intention for this this wall that, that sort of provides a, a half circle towards the sea is to prevent the deepest of waves from washing in and making the, the nearest buildings uh, age unnaturally, if you will, covered in salt water from time to time. Um... I'll ask Gaetano if he'll be staying to help or if he'll be going back with the crew. Well, as much as my, my heart belongs at sea, and as much as I want to get back on the errant widow as, my, as quickly as I can, I'm not going to leave just yet. I've got a little business here anyway, so maybe I'll, um, maybe I can attend to that. But, of course, if all of us survive the coming attack, let me kind of turn off. Chuckles sort of half nervously, half not. There's a sort of breezy confidence that he tends to have. But at the same time, he's he's not he doesn't want to undercut the seriousness of this attack. Yeah. Besides, I wouldn't mind uh, getting to know you folks a little bit better. It's, it's always good to know the people who saved your lives. Maybe I can buy you around somewhere. Yeah. The three bells is where we're staying. <laughs> Sounds delightful. I hope they've got a room for me, too. No, I believe they do. 
I think they still had space when we left. So. Yeah. Now, where are you heading in town? Where you'd want? Do you want to just go right to the Three Bells? Um, I think. Well, first we got to return the uh, the car. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I need to drop by the uh, the smithery to pick up my stuff. Um, I'll go back to the three bells, uh, and I'll invite Gaetano and the ladies to come with, and I'll pay for a room for the ladies. Okay. Um, what order is all of this happening? Are you going to walk back to the three bells? Are you going to take the cart and drop them off there? What's the, what's the, what's the marching order here? Um... I'll probably take the cart back and then we can all walk to wherever we need to go. Uh, that way the ladies can see a bit of the town. Okay. Um, as you uh, are bringing the cart back, um, you notice uh, a, a young man on a horseback. Someone, someone you've actually seen before wearing a very uh, shiny, full armor. Uh, the armor is very well taken care of. You can see little little... Um, additional uh, 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 small gemstones, really, on the pauldrons on the shoulders. Uh, large uh, sword at his side. The horse is about a mid-sized Morgan, which is a, a brown horse, uh, kind of muscular, but a little smaller than average. And the person on the, the horse also seems to be um, a little bit smaller, but the, the proportion of the horse in person gives you that illusion of it being you know, larger than, than life. Wearing a, uh, a large helm, over their heads with a a, uh, a large uh, plume of horsehair that's been kind of attached to the back of it, looking very very fancy. Sword on the on the hip, shield on the arm. Um, kind of walking down the street, um, and Silas, you actually recognize mostly by reputation. You haven't seen him uh, too much, uh, but you recognize. Um, oh, I got a scroll here. Uh, scrolling. Scrolling is the death of me. Uh, oh, how far away? It's not the tax collector guy, is it? Uh, no. Uh, this is Captain Verendel, who is uh, the captain of the guard. Um, has always kind of maintained this slightly aloof uh, perspective. Uh, and you get the feeling that with an increased guard presence here, uh, Captain Verendel probably has maybe an inflated sense of self or inflated sense of perform of, of, of importance. Um, Verendel's always always uh, struck you as a, as younger than uh, you might expect for someone with so much power. Um, they look like uh, they're in their maybe twenties. Um, short blonde hair that's shaved on the side and just has that sort of uh, swath uh, kind of tilted off to one side at the very top uh, when not wearing armor. Speaks in a very uh, affected way, um, not from uh, Elthwater, clearly from somewhere else, you're not exactly sure where, uh, and most often is riding around on his horse. Um, there's a sense of, of strength or almost uh, imposing nature, perhaps, that's trying to be expressed when uh, Captain Verendal uh, uh, walks around. And you can see that the, the captain kind of rides over to, uh, to your wagon, actually, and kind of looks down on uh, everyone who's inside. Uh, you see that uh, Stela looks up at this shining beacon a little bit nervously. Um, Clearly, kind of both impressed and scared. Joan is a little bit shivery. Um, Yutano kind of looks over at Annie for any direction, maybe, or just sort of like, who's this guy? There's a he quirks a, an eyebrow, kind of like, literally, uh, who is this guy? Kind of to <laughs> you, would Medrick know who he is? Uh, to Annie. Um, would Medrick know who he is? Um, from the stature and from the, the full dress and everything else, um, it, it strikes you that clearly a, a military leader, clearly someone of higher rank, 
than you had achieved, but you're not okay. familiar with this specific person. You, you'll clearly get the captain part, but you don't know the Verendil part, essentially. And I would so, get that as well? Uh, yes, actually, yeah. And the other thing that you notice, Annie, is that this armor, it looks like it's functional. You're not sure if it's ever functioned. Uh, it, it, it has a ceremonial kind of feel to it. Uh, and clearly, uh, you know, it has that look of someone who takes very, very good care of this armor. Maybe a little bit too good a care of this armor. Don't step out of the wagon, stand up, and just salute. <laughs> so is this the head of the guard? Yes. Okay, so he's the person that we would tell. Yeah. Um, and he looks down, kind of, you don't see the face, but you see the head tilt with the helmet on. Uh, and from within the helmet, kind of a hollow uh, ring from the helmet itself, you hear this voice, uh, which is young and yet trying to present or project an older sense. So I'll see if I can if I can demonstrate what I mean here. I feel like it's going to be three halflings in a big armor. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> Sorry, Annie, what would you say? I also like my back is now straighter. I'm I'm sitting very proper posture. Okay, um, it's more likely to be three halflings in a horse suit than at this point. But uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, I see we have some visitors to the town. I know you, Marsh. And I believe I recognize the symbol Ignis on you, good sir. Medric. Medric. Yes. What was his last name again? Do the V? Uh, Verendel. So V E R Y N D E L. Verendel. Uh, Captain Verendel. Uh, we have something important to report. Uh, there's been an attack from uh, Sea Devils at the lighthouse and uh is it and uh i believe there will be another attack on the town itself an attack by sea devils you say oh, yes well that's quite a tale i did notice that the lighthouse seemed dimmer than usual but uh, they still i'm sure it was bandits they've been a terrible mess recently we were there. I put out an, an illusion of one of the sea devils uh, at its normal height and size and say, Where do you put the illusion? Middle of the street. Okay. Well, right next to the captain. Okay. His horse backs away, kind of, kind of surprised at the, at the illusion that pops up. Um, and you can see some people on the other side of the street sort of walking along and looking at this this sort of weird little thing that's popped up and <laughs> moving not only uh, away from it, but kind of down a side alley to get the hell away from even seeing it. Um, that looks terrifying. Terrible. But you well, say, you, 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 say you, were, over the... you were there, were you? Yes. We hmm. fought several of them and, and rescued several people from their clutches and what of you sir and he turns to address Gaetano um, and then Gaetano, the illusion will go away he doesn't keep it up Gaetano kind of uh, looks at him and you can see uh, Annie in particular you can kind of see that Gaetano's uh, muscles are tensing slightly um, yeah kid what they said was was true who might you be sir I know that I'm not familiar with all the members of this town, but you have the countenance of a sailor. Are you recently into town? Yeah. 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 Uh, name's Gitano. I, I came on a ship, but not on my own, my own choice. Rather, I didn't come off the ship on my own choice. These people saved me. Did they? Hmm. Nod. So you say you've seen sea devils, and that they attacked the lighthouse? They did. Yeah. They stole the beacon. And that there's and some going, sort of... Attack the tomorrow. Some sort of attack coming in a day and a half, you said. I didn't say a day and a half, but... Uh, well, we Medrick, did. Medrick just did. Say, oh, Medrick, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Yes. Seems highly unlikely. There hasn't been a sea devil attack in this part of the of the islands yeah. for well longer than most of us have been alive. Maybe That's it was just an, an illusion, like what you had just w wiggled up. I'll show him like the numerous bite marks that are all over. Like it's like show him the warhammer. Is this an illusion? <laughs> he reaches out his hand to take the warhammer. Hmm? Right. This is the weapon they used. A most curious, curious weapon. Where did you say you found it? Well, I killed the sea devil for it. Mm -hmm. it and then I used it. He kind of swings it, and for the, the modern viewer, uh, there's almost a sense of using it like a, uh, a uh, I don't know what they're called, I guess bat probably from a... Um, Croquet mallet? A, a, no, well, not croquet, but the, well, the horse-bound croquet. Uh, yeah, polo mallet. Polo, yeah. Uh, kind of swinging a little bit. It has a strange weight about it. Very exotic weapon. I'm sure that you paid well for it. And he kind of tosses it back to you grab the weapon. Yeah, I did. It was free. It was great. <laughs> but really, I've heard all sorts of histor hysterical stories over the last few days. The bandits seem to be stepping up their attacks and rather attempting to scare the, uh, the living daylights out of a lot of the villagers and even a few of the ship-born people. So I hardly suspect that what you saw was exactly what you thought you saw. I'm just like, really? <laughs> yeah, you can see Gaetano is kind of holding on to a bit of anger. He's not speaking much, though. You'll regret not listening to us. Is there anybody it else we can talk to? Listen. Because you did not listen. It is on you. We will fight them. We will defend as much as we can. But if you do not take this seriously, that is on you. Make a persuasion roll. This, is, this froze my computer. I can't tell the number. Um, <laughs> it was an eight. <laughs> Cool. Um, I just had to click the thing and my entire computer froze. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, well, it, was a, it was an eight, unfortunately. Cool. Um, I'm sure that you saw or thought you saw something very concerning. And if yours was the first story to reach me today, perhaps I would be a little more inclined to take it seriously. But I have had too many... Multiple people were telling you the same thing, you'd believe it. I will have a detachment go and investigate the lighthouse to see what troubles there were there. Some of the sailors have complained that its light was not strong enough to guide them in in the storms last night. I understand at least one ship went down, which is a terrible tragedy. But there have been all sorts of stories... And I'm having a hard time placing yours in credence. Myths and stories meant to scare children are abounding today. Why, just a moment ago, someone told me that their house was haunted. And yet another farmer came into town complaining that his entire flock of sheep had been eaten by some lard monster. Now I have it on the authority that... that if the if the farmer was the one we helped, I forget his name. Uh, Rake. Winthrop. Winthrop. Was it the Winthrop farm? No, no, I forget the name exactly. It's in the records, and I will have a detachment sent out. But I also have it on good authority that that particular farmer had a bad year because of pub debts more than uh, sheep being attacked. And there's been all sorts of stories. So please, beyond this. This hammer and these these people vouching for your story. Do you have any evidence of this attack? Suppose I take it on face value that the the lighthouse was attacked by sea devils. 
I can't even believe I just said that out loud. Still, if this fairy story is real, how would you have any idea that there is an attack coming? I'm pretty sure that they don't write down their plans in a convenient chart indicating this is where and when we are going to do our bad business. But what if they did? And produce the chart by all means, and I will be the first to lead the charge. But I can't simply send people in all directions or alert the town that it is to be attacked by stories. All I can show you is the hammer, the wounds we've sustained, and I'll point to the lighthouse. The fact that the lighthouse is not as bright as it as it once was. They took the stone from the lighthouse. The lighthouse is currently relying on oil instead of the stone that's usually there. He kind of waves a hand. I, I, don't, I don't know how they run their lighthouse. That's supposed to be their business. All I know is the effect is it is lesser than it should be. Not running at efficiency and causing because problems. Because the stone here. was taken by sea devils. As you say. Um, you're going to have Medric do a persuasion roll? You'll have advantage because Annie is making compelling points and insistent points. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perception. He's already kind of discounted Annie, though, a little bit. You get that impression that you, you, he's heard a lot, and it doesn't make any sense to him whatsoever. Let's be persuasive. What do I get? 12 and a 2. Oh, that's slightly better than Annie's. It's double digits, yo. It is double digits. Um. And I'll, like, look at Silas, like... If you can help us <laughs> you get the bureaucracy to freaking listen. I just, I'll say back in, in the minds of Medrick and Annie, just that uh, he's not going to listen to me any more than you. I think his mind is set. Look, I'm trying to be sympathetic with you here. As I have been all morning with numerous people. But the one thing that seems very clear to me is there's some sort of conspiracy going afoot to make sure that whatever guards I have are spread out so thinly on so many wild chases that any one point of this town will be un undefended from another bandit attack. And I'm not going to have that happen. Or from a sea That's devil. why we're telling you to fortify the guard on the town. And if I do so, then the road goes undefended. And the bandits take the next caravan that comes along the royal road. Or, or heaven forbid, they make some attack on the baron himself. I am sympathetic, but I can't simply send everyone everywhere. Now, this attack is in a day or so. So you said, seems conveniently far away that nothing could be seen today, which is problematic. Look, mm -hmm. you sorry ass riding on your damned horse, as Gaetano starts to just, you can kind of feel, and you've been kind of sitting beside him, this sort of, yeah, this sort of tension that's been building where he's like, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to, and then it just kind of, Oop, Pick, that must have come out of my ear. Picking, picking out a little bit of, of, of your insistent, uh, but it has been very quiet up to this point. Yeah, uh, when that explodes, Medrick is like, oh shit, because like Medrick wouldn't talk that way to one of his superiors. He, no he, he stands up on the, on the wagon because you're just returning the wagon. Stands up on the wagon, and actually, when he's standing on the wagon, he's actually taller than Verandol on his horse um, to give you an impression of how, how small those actually are. And with one of his, his big meaty fists, he starts to gesture towards the, the captain. Uh, now look, kid, I know you think you're all high and mighty because you're standing two feet off the ground on a pretty damn fine horse that deserves something better. But you bet your shiny ass that these people are telling the truth. And who the hell do you think you are, sir? And you see uh, Verandel kind of reaching over towards his sword. I will not be spoken to you by some 
to me by some common sailor. Catano balls his fist. <laughs> steps up onto the edge of the of the wagon, putting one foot up on the on the uh, the the side of it. I think you need to be taught some manners, kid, and maybe a little bit more about your job. Do you know even why you're what you're here for? I am here, and he kind of kicks the rein a little bit, and the horse backs off a foot. I'm here to keep the peace. Whether it be from bandits preying upon our poor citizens, destroying the commerce to Pitajun with the caravans being overrun, or unruly sailors with drunken stories of monsters from the sea to wander into our town, my job is to make sure that such people are dealt with. Gitano lunges towards him, fist forward. I'll, I'll try to stop him. <laughs> uh, make a make a dexterity saving throw to try to to keep him from lunging. Uh, I would like to say stop. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, you see you see the tension. You know uh, when someone is about to to launch into this. You've seen this in battle. You know yeah. that when that back foot, the the the, the calf muscle, kind of twitches a little bit. You know that when the shoulder shifts just ever so slightly, you know that someone with uh, with bald fists only feet away from someone, you know when he's about to launch. And you kind of, how do you stop him? So you grab him around the leg? No, I'll just like get myself in between him and uh, Captain Garandel. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, just like uh, bear, stop. <laughs> You, you, you manage to kind of grab onto him and, and Gaetano throws you a look and you kind of get, it's like that, it's kind of like the light in the lighthouse when the bright light sort of swashes over you. You kind of get that intense stare from Gaetano who's who's clearly not holding it much longer uh, and you feel his whole body tense. Sorry, what was that? It's like, this isn't going to help anything <laughs> that I tell Gaetano, Gaetano. Uh, and from the back of the horse, you hear a shrill whistle. As Verendel has lifted up the the uh, the visor on his his mask, put a whistle that he had uh, in a pocket to his lips, and is now blowing fiercely, which Silas, you know, is a call for the guard. I stand up. So you will not be you will not be arresting one of the seven, will you? Um, you'll make a persuasion roll with advantage. One of the seven. Gitano, seven. Gitano looks over at you, kind of, uh, here's where, here's where you get this strange combination of human emotion, because clearly he's furious right now. He, there's an asshole in front of him, he's not listening, and he just wants to, to punch him. But combine <laughs> that with this sort of mid-fall uh, look on your face when you realize you've plummeted out of an airplane. And you're like, what? Uh, kind of that combined across Gaetano's face right now as he looks over to Annie, uh, what you've just said. Uh, and... Well, advantage saved me from a one. <laughs> uh, that is an 18. 18. Uh, the, uh, the sound of the whistle goes, goes uh, immediately drops off as the whistle itself is sort of dropped out of his, out of his mouth. Um, and he, again, kind of kicks the horse and it backs up a step or two. Um, and uh, the, the, the captain uh, looks from you in complete confusion as to why you would even say something like this to Gaetano, uh, and, and who is himself kind of relaxing a little bit from your grasp, Medric, uh, as he's not immediately... A little more. And the, the captain, um, you you see him kind of swallow heavily uh, the the uh, the uh, visor of the helmet as he kind of moves his head back, slides down, probably accidentally in front of his face. Behind him, from down the road, you see um, three guardsmen, uh, recognizable because they have essentially a common 
um, common tabard, which is more or less just a simple uh, line of cloth. Uh, in a sort of sea green color. Otherwise, everything that they're wearing seems to be different. Medrick, you recognize one of them as the, uh, one of the soldiers he served with who had their own armor and is still wearing them, uh, wearing it. Uh, and the I other two... Kind of two okay. Yeah. I'll probably want to wait until the full description comes <laughs> for Andy to come back. But, um, but Medrick, you do, you do recognize at least one of them as one of the soldiers you had served with um, and who is carrying a, a mace and sort of they're all three of them sprinting forward to find out what's going on. If she's going to take a moment, I am too to get more coffee. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll we'll take a, a a brief a brief break here. I'll go to the pause screen just to give myself a little more sanity, uh, and then it, it'll only be a moment or two. Oh, and she's already oh. back. I didn't get. All right, fine. I'm not getting coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just had to go make sure that people were awake to leave for work. So I made the mistake of vamping. Uh, <laughs> So, as these people are charging forward, again, the one that Medrick recognizes and the other two being probably just villagers, they don't look like they have any particular armor on underneath, uh, just kind of uh, a heavy leather coat sprinting down. Uh, but the captain uh, looks at Annie and then looks to Gaetano. I, I don't understand. Why? I don't even know what he sounds like anymore. Um, <laughs> He's shocked out of his own accent. How about that? All of Regent's <laughs> gone. He's he's completely unnerved. Um, one of the seven, you say? And he looks at Gitano with an appraising eye, and Gitano looks over at you, Annie, and after the initial rage and shock have kind of worn off, you see his shoulders slump slightly, uh, as if, Fine. And he turns back to the captain. My name is... Inigo Montoya. <laughs> Don't undercut my moment entirely, bud. Uh, <laughs> although, that was kind of... I never got that chance before. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. It is tempting, but no. Uh, my name is Sir Oswin Montmundo. One of the seven knights of Alaria. I'm here under um, other business and kind of turns towards Annie with a, a bit of a an annoyed look. But I suppose for the safe of the safety of the town, you should know who I am. The three guards now have run up and they're kind of surrounding the horse, looking up at uh, Captain Verendel for confirmation and looking confused, Verendel's helm is still closed, uh, the whistle kind of dangling from uh, the rope that had it on his, on his belt. Uh, the horse even seems to shuffle nervously. Now, I know it sounds like fiction, and trust me, a lot of what my job has been in the last few years is hunting down fiction, but I saw it with my own eyes. What they're saying is true. The Sea Devils are back. And while I wasn't there to hear the plan, from what this young man says, they're planning to take this town down. Drown it, tear it up, and eat the survivors. So, if you've been listening, you've got some work to do. And you got a day and a half to get ready. There's a silence for a moment as the three guardsmen kind of look at whatever this person's just said. This this ridiculous sentence has just come out of his mouth. They look up at the captain. And they speed off to get their work done. <laughs> the captain <laughs> turns towards uh, one of the two plain-clothed uh, guardsmen. You see him go from kind of half bent over almost kind of uh, uh, the captain kind of slumping a little bit in his in his seat, cowed a little bit by the moment. But then he straightens up. His head is held high. Nathan. Assemble the guard. We've got work to do. Sorry, that's the wrong guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nathan, assemble the guard. We've got work to do. If you have any details of this plan to share, uh, Mr. Marsh, I would be eager to hear them. I will be uh, in my office getting ready. I, w I will be by. And he kind of turns the horse and starts to ride. At first, the horse kind of steps a couple of quick steps, and then he reins it in. And as much as he can salvage of the moment of his dignity, calmly rides the horse down the street. The two other guards uh, still kind of flanking him and looking at each other and then looking back at you guys with a lot of confusion. The one soldier you know, though, Medrick, uh, kind of uh, kind of nods towards you. Uh, that 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 sort of camaraderie, um, recognition, not exactly, not 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 deference or anything, just sort of like, okay then, war it is. Yep. <laughs> Let's go again. <laughs> I really hate pencil neck bureaucrats. So but do I. I. Same. That kid might have some spirit in him after all. Now, once we get to the, once we get to the three bells, I will have some explaining to do. What's the seven? I mean, there's only six of us. I, I will explain to you less, when we get to the end. The less said about that in, in shared company, the better, if you don't mind, kid. And yeah, no. you've got some explaining to do, Annie. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's good. Wait a minute. The Somebody last thing we needed is for us to get arrested. I don't mind being arrested. But for the right reasons. But it's too much at stake. All right. Lead on to the three bells. And Silas, you were going to go in the opposite direction, I believe, to the blacksmith? Um, well, yeah. At this point, uh, yeah, I guess I'll just uh, I'll drop them off at the three bells and then take the cart over. I'll be back uh, as soon as I uh, finish the deal with the smithy. Okay. Um, it. Okay. Yeah, you ride over to the three bells. Um, let's uh, let's make a perception check for each of you. I just want to know which one would have noticed. That's my third one of the night. I got a 10. Second. I can count. <laughs> Apparently not past Holy one. Crap, guys. Uh, what did you get, Annie? One. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Dice jail. Wow. Well, the highest with a 10 <laughs> was mm -hmm. Medric, uh, who just sort of notices, first of all, that Joan is very nervous, which is not surprising given the confrontation they just had. And and the, the moment of, of calm that you probably she probably got from the ride on over seems to have dissipated somewhat. And she's holding on tightly to Stella's arm, uh, who seems to be, they seem to be in quiet whispers uh, to each other. Uh, and, and maybe they're friends now? It's hard to say, but they definitely seem to be whispering amongst each other. Uh, inside the Three Bells, uh, mid-afternoon, it's a little bit early for the, the supper uh, the supper hour when a lot of the uh, local people would come in to eat, uh, and certainly uh, far earlier for, than any of the, the, uh, the regulars who would come in after the day's work is done. So the room is fairly empty, uh, but the, uh, the smiling face of one of the bells, let me see, that would be, uh, where are you here? Sandy. Uh, up on uh, up on her essentially orange crate behind the bar, so she's she's level with this, uh, with the rest of the room because she's a halfling, uh, and uh, the group of you go in. Um, it's fairly quiet. There's only a couple people sitting by the fire. Um, you kind of think you're pretty sure you saw those same two people this morning. <laughs> they haven't moved, uh, and kind of our permanent residents, uh, a couple of old codgers uh, who seem to be always around. Um, and uh, Gaetano comments, not a bad looking place. Uh, goes yeah. over to the bar and asks if they've got rooms. Statler and Waldorf are like, 
Yeah, but you don't have to live here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if Bella and Joan are like whispering, do, do they actually speak the same language? Or? I mean, presumably. You didn't hear the details of the whispering, but you noticed that they were whispering back and forth. I'll try to eavesdrop a little more as my friends like get... <laughs> That sounded bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, make a. We're going to call this sleight of hand and a perception check. So, sleight of hand is to kind of do this without being noticed. Sleight of hand is kind of weird for this, but it covers a lot of different things. And the perception check to follow. Yeah, that's, that's a nine. And perception is. Oh, perception's okay, but they, okay. they totally. Like, Notice me creeping on in, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the part of it is that, you know, you are a rather imposing presence. Uh, and I, I don't think you've put your armor back on, but even without the armor, uh, there's still... What's that? I did, yeah. Okay. Put the armor well, on. Certainly with the armor and, 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 and all of that, uh, you, you kind of clearly stand out in the crowd. And uh, the Three Bells, while a nice place, it's not a huge place. There's not a lot of places you can kind of stand and, and, uh, and not be noticed. So they, they do kind of quiet quiet up after uh, after they notice what what you're 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 hearing, uh, but you you kind of hear Stella or Stella uh, whisper to uh, Joan, uh, just sort of asking about the town. At least that's what you think at first, and then she kind of asks about uh, the three bells and asks about you know what is that, and Joan uh, explains, oh that that's a bar, dear. Uh, and it seems like there's a lot of little things that Stela is asking about very curiously, but also keeping, it seems to be kind of embarrassed to ask, but for whatever reason, her and Joan, maybe from shared trauma, <laughs> seem to have bonded somewhat. Oh. <laughs> um, the, uh, uh, Sandy smiles up at the, at, uh, Gaetano who, who after a moment ago, just being, probably one of the scariest people uh, you've met in a while, at least sort of like the, the rolling boulder that's about to fall on you kind of impression from Gaetano. Now turning on a, a bright smile, uh, and even, uh, Annie, you would have noticed, as he walked over to the bar, he actually subtly slid his sleeve up slightly, revealing more of the tattoo that he has. It looks like a very large, fancy tattoo of a whale on his, uh, on his uh, arm. And it's it looks ex uh, exquisite. It's actually got little little shining bits in it that look like some other shining metal or gem maybe were inserted within the tattoo. And he leans on the bar with that that arm kind of kind of shone out. And and the effect is clear on Sandy uh, as he kind of leans in and uh, chats for a moment and asks about a room. Uh, and you get the impression that. If she hadn't caught herself, she might have said that there was a room right there in the back. It's hers, but she <laughs> can have it. Um, uh, but he also orders a, a, a round of ales. Um, and she's going to bring that. And you find uh, there's a, a couple of tables that can kind of be brought together if you're going to gather everybody together. Otherwise, uh, Joan and Stela are kind of sitting by themselves a little bit. Um, they sort of veer towards the fire, but then Stela kind of veers them away from the fire over to another quiet corner. That's fair. And uh, Gitano puts the, the beer steins in front of all of you. Ah, thank you. Uh, and raises his beer. So, as you might have uh, gathered, Gaetano is not exactly the name I'm mostly known by. It's a, it's a name I'm proud to hold. Gaetano was a good friend of mine. And his, his life is handy to slip into. But yes, I'd prefer if you still call me Gaetano. But Sir Oswin Mundo... One of the seven. What and are the what, seven? What Titles are a weird thing. What, uh, and what should I call you? And he holds out his, his beer towards Annie. And that's where we're going to end for today. 
we'll pick up with this particular discussion next week. So, because of internet weirdness, we were not able to stream this week, so uh, hopefully you've had, had a chance to catch this on YouTube. Normally, we intend to switch, uh, to switch, to stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash ENCAF1 on Sundays. We had, during the summer, uh, changed our time to accommodate the fact that it was getting too hot. I had a lot of nasty words to stick in there. We'll just, I'll leave that gap and you can stick in your own. Uh, it was getting too warm and too, uh, too humid here to, to really continue uh, during the afternoons. But fall has arrived, and more reasonable, seasonable temperatures have, have also arrived, and mornings are hard. So we're going to be shifting our schedule back to something a little more reasonable. Uh, we're going to, uh, as far as we know, we know we've got some other potential schedule interruptions coming up, uh, but next week we will be starting at 2 o'clock Atlantic time, streaming live on Twitch, uh, and then, of course, the videos will go up on YouTube after that. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little uh, this little foray in this alt game. Uh, you can find all the videos at youtube.com slash ENCAF1, the first campaign, which is paused for the moment. Uh, we will get back to that at some point because there's still, you know, the universe to save. And uh, this game also is up there. You can find them under uh, playlists. So this one is uh, the... Uh, the Great Confusion is the subtitle for this particular one. So you can find a playlist with just those videos there if you want. If you didn't find them interesting, I would encourage you to subscribe. Click the little bell. That'll that'll give you a warning every time I put one of these videos up. It could strike at any time. It works. Like 2 a.m. in the morning. You might get this little note from your phone saying, Mark has actually finally done this. Or maybe it'll be like at noontime. I can't tell you when they're going to go up. Uh, but I will tell you that they, they will go up. You can also, if you're curious and have questions, um, of course, you can always join us in the chat in Twitch when we're streaming. We usually pay attention to it. Usually slowly pay attention to it. Usually after the fact, pay attention to it. Uh, but a little bit easier way for us to converse is to go to the group on Facebook. Facebook.com slash L-O-T-D-I should take you to the, uh, the, the group page. I never remember. God, why do they make it so tough? Uh, there's also a, a Watchers of the Drown Dials, which is meant to be kind of a, a discussion group as well. There hasn't been much going up there recently, I admit. Uh, but uh, I'm happy to say that I have remembered this week to actually post some articles on World Anvil. So I'm starting to uh, let people know about the, the, the world as it exists in Omatia, both uh, in the year 41, uh, 41 67, I want to say. That's probably wrong which is the, the later campaign, or 3118, which is the current campaign. So you'll find some stuff up there about the Aroka. Uh, there's a little bit about Elfwater, uh, Elfwater and, uh, and some of the people that you've met. And curiously enough, badly uh, telegraphed by me, the members of the Seven went up as one of my first trial articles. We can read a little bit more about Sir Osmond Mundo, although for my players, uh, let's just play it out during the game. You'll learn more about him there. Uh, I want to thank my players for joining me this week. About this thing, I'm not supposed to go look at this thing. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> well, I mean, Sir Oswin Mundo, perhaps uh, I'll leave his uh, entry until later because um, he'll he'll get a chance to explain. But uh, there are some other things there, and I am adding more uh, for a trial article because I ran across it in my notes. Uh, here's here's the crazy, stupid amount of things that I've done for this. I have the list of my horses. So uh, Morgan is actually a kind of horse. Based on, on our world oh, yeah, horses. Right, you did that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, you can actually see the horses that are there. And there is a note that uh, some have speculated because many of the centaurs share common traits with a lot of the horse breeds. But no one will ask them directly if there's any sort of relationship <laughs> between them. Exactly. Uh, yeah. There, there's a, Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but uh, now I don't have a link for that handy, which was kind of dumb. They don't have pretty links for people who don't pay a lot of money. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'll have a link in the show notes uh, for this YouTube episode. And I'll try to add that to the end. Uh, I don't think it's in our end sequence right now. Um, but uh, let me see if that actually comes up. Uh, oh, well, okay. That's not a terrible one. I'll read it out. You won't remember it. WorldAnvil.com slash W slash Omatia dash ENCAF1. So... It's not terrible. You have a lot of things Two to spell in there. Yes, yes. Omatia, O-M-M-A-T-I-A. Uh, but I think if you search for Omatia on World Animal, you'll find it there. 
Uh, and there's 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 lots more to come. I, I totally admit, uh, in, including a, a vague map of, of uh, Silver Moon Bay, which is the location where everything is taking place this time. Anything else, guys, that I should add? No. Awesome. No? Think, think you hit it all. <laughs> Thanks again to my players. Thank you for watching. And uh, have we just... Or was, it, was that? Try Not to Drown was our... There you go. <laughs> Uh, and try not to drown. <laughs> Jeez.